Assalamualaikum and good morning to everyone. Welcome back to PEMSO webinar. We will continue today's webinar with main session, which is Paramedical Series, A Cup of Coffee with Your Doctor, with the topic Implant Architect, brought to you by Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia Southern Chapter, in collaboration with Com Community, Social and Responsibility Committee of Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Our lovely and gorgeous speaker for this topic is Datuk Dr. Sharifa Fauzia al habshi Not losing time, I'll pass the floor to our moderator, graduate architect Wan Siti Hajar. Here you go. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you to our host and the Sharon session with, from our Pramso partner. With the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would like to continue with the highlight of our program uh, that will be uh, with um, that will be shared uh, with all our participants and hopefully will be benefit to all. Uh, with that, I would like to invite our like, like you say, beautiful speaker, Dr. Dr. Sharifa Fauzi al habshi to share with us our, on how dental implant add as a new dimension to the quality of life. And before we continue, I would like to remind the participant, please uh, post their questions on the Q&A box or the chat box as we will answer your question during the Q&A session. So without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Dr. Sharifa Fauzi al habshi to share her screen. Dr. the screen is yours. Right. Are you starting? Okay. Assalamu okay. right. alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning to everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to really thank the Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia okay, for inviting me to speak and do this presentation. Uh, I was really excited and very honoured to have been given this uh, invitation because uh, the architects are a group of people which in my mind uh, very closely relates to what we do in dentistry and you'll see that as I go along in my presentation. And I, 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 I appreciate architects very much because of the beautiful things that they put up uh, for people to appreciate. And I do appreciate beautiful buildings. I do appreciate beautiful structures. And I know the thought and the inspiration and the planning behind it is massive. It's not something that will come just like that. It has to have a lot of pre-planning behind it, which is very similar to what we do when we're talking about uh, someone who has come to you with a need for um, re-energizing, reinventing their mouth and rejuvenating their mouth. Okay. So, you can see my face. Uh, hang on, just a little technical glitch to get over with first. Okay. You could say the dental implants are the closest you can get to healthy natural teeth. And this day and age of ours, this is really true. They allow you to live the way you want to, confidently eating, smiling, talking, kissing, enjoying all your everyday activities, which is so important to us. And dental implants are the only dental restoration currently available that preserves your natural bone, actually helping you to stimulate bone growth as well. And this is uh, so very important. Uh, as we age, when we lose our teeth, our bodies will begin to shrink and become smaller in size. And that's when you start to have problems of how do you restore yourself. You always want to look as young as possible. You always remember yourself at your best in your 20s or in your late teens, and you think you're, that's your best look. And you like to always be as close to that as possible. Uh, but nature, unfortunately, takes its toll. And we know that we gradually change with time. Some, some of us uh, gradually age much better than others. So the topic of my presentation today, I will cover the following topics. First, I'd like you to understand what is a dental implant. And I'd like you to understand the consequence of untreated teeth loss, because unfortunately in Malaysia, we still have a lot of people who don't appreciate their teeth as much as they should. And they oftentimes just leave their teeth loss untreated. And the end result is as you grow older, when your need for teeth, your need for eating good food and nutrition becomes even more important, you then realize, I wish I had my tooth or my teeth. I wish I had treated it better. I wish I'd you know, hang on to whatever I have in my mouth. 
then what are the options that we have for teeth replacement? And finally, to show you some case studies so that it might relate to you or your family or anybody that you may think may benefit from it. So let's have a look at one case. I know I've started out with a picture which is kind of, well, this is a bit too much to look at, but I think I wanted to grab your attention first. This is a very interesting case of Mr. Captain Din. His name is Captain Din. Uh, he came to me one morning with a history of a fall. He's a bit of a fitness freak person. He likes to run and he ran on, you know, our Malaysian roads are really not made for running as you guys know, right? I wish we have better city planning with better running places and tracks for running and stuff. Anyway, he ran as he always does every Sunday. And this particular Sunday, he fell down, he tripped and fell down and hit himself. He hit his nose, fortunately he didn't hit his eyes, but he unfortunately hit his front tooth. And you can see the upper right front tooth where there's a little bit of bleeding there, that's the tooth that he hits. He hit his front tooth. And of all the teeth that you can choose to lose, the front tooth is the worst tooth that you can choose to lose. Immediately upon the loss of a front tooth, you lose your confidence, you lose your ability to speak, you lose your ability to eat well, you are totally a wreck. It does not matter if you lose five teeth at the back of your mouth, nobody sees it, you don't care. Front tooth, even one front tooth that's cheap, even one front tooth that's, you know, uh, a little bit out of alignment. For some people, it becomes a major life issue. Anyway, he came to the clinic. And as you can see in the middle picture there, the tooth had to be taken out. And you can see how it fractured. The line in between, by the way, connecting the two parts of the tooth is the nerve. So if anybody has not seen what a nerve of your tooth looks like, that's what your nerve of your tooth looks like. It's like a pin, like a needle, right? So when you know when you do have root canal, some people have root canal treatment done, what we do is we need to remove that little nerve that's right in between the teeth. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, very good. So this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is the nerve. So this is Captain Dean when he came. A bit of a sorry sight. He was really sad because he has a very important presentation to do in a few months' time. And he really was not expecting this to happen at all. Anyway, Captain Dean came. We had removed... We removed this tooth and then we had to give him a temporary. So you can see some stitches here where we quickly gave him a temporary tooth in order that he can go out again uh, smiling. If you look at Captain Dean, at the same time, you notice that Captain Dean uh, has been a very nice patient of mine through the years, but you could say that he only comes when he needs to come. You can see the problems, he has some teeth arrangement problems. Never mind. Captain Dean then decided, Dr. Sharifa, this is the time I change myself. This is the time I improve my look. So this is what we did to him. Captain Dean, midway through his treatment, he already has got an implant placed inside his jawbone inside here, because that really is the best treatment option for the replacement of his lost tooth. We did not want to engage the tooth on the left, no, do you want to engage the tooth on the right, because otherwise he will be uh, even more compromised. And at the end of it all, after a couple of months of treatment, it took a bit of time, yeah? In coming from the beginning to the end stage, you need to realize that in implant treatment, time is important. You cannot have it overnight. Although there is a technique where you can say tooth in a day or tooth in one visit, that's a totally different concept and that can only be done in very, very limited situations. For most people, when you have an implant treatment done, you need to um, wait for a time frame. That time frame aspect, we'll talk about it later. So now here is Captain Lin at the end of his treatment. Okay, I'm going to go back to Captain Lin again, because you can see how Captain Lin looks now. His teeth are more in a better alignment. The color is more synonymous throughout. He has a much better confident smile and is ready to face the world without any worries for anyone saying, hey, hey, how, why is your teeth looking crooked? Why is everything out of, you know, out of sync with each other? He really is a very happy man. And he's in his 50s, late 50s. Okay, so let's hear the story of Captain D. Let's try again now. Hello, uh, good evening, everyone. In uh, here now? Somewhere in March. Yes, yes. Nice. Ah, Last good. year, uh, I had a nasty fall, and uh, whereby it's quite a, a B 
bit of in injury and uh, where uh, I almost fell flat on my face. I immediately, good thing is that I immediately came to the dentist uh, and she fixed the problem temporarily and she recommended that I do a implant which I totally agree with her. And uh, from then on, the process take a bit of uh, a lengthy time whereby I need to do a bone grafting. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm quite happy with the final product uh, whereby uh, I got a very uh, brand new brand tooth, uh, brand new uh, front tooth. And to me, at this age, uh, uh, implant is a way to go because uh, it's uh, as good as a uh, new tooth. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharifah. Um, did you all hear the story? Uh, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, you would agree with me, no? me uh, Captain Din now looks really much more uh, handsome, younger than he originally <laughs> looked at. And, and he, he looks came more into confident. The clinic. Yeah. That is for sure. Whenever you do anything to your front tooth and you improve the appearance of your smile, your confidence automatically comes. You know, it's because you look at yourself every day. Uh, of course, we are all not perfect. That's clear. That's clear. Nobody is perfect. Uh, but, you know, a little enhancement here, that little improvement here and there makes a big difference. Oftentimes, we think that a, a, a great skin, a great pair of eyes, a great lipstick makes a difference. But actually, the secret to a beautiful face is a beautiful smile. Yeah? Okay, let's continue. So, as the topic says implant architect, or architect in implantology, here is a picture which I found by chance, actually. And I found so much similarity between this Nakatomi Plaza of Los Angeles the movie of Die Hard 1, my staff tell me this, Dr. Sharifa is the movie of Die Hard 1 where Bruce really stars in it. And then I looked at my dental implant, and I said, hmm, there's a lot of similarity in it. Don't you think so? If I rotate the implant now, does it look like the Nakatomi like Plaza? So the similarity- That is really is funny. Design. That is really <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the design, the shape and the form, everything is so similar. So. Really, these days, dental implants are the treatment of choice for replacing missing teeth worldwide. I put out a name of that gentle, that Swedish gentleman down there, Mr. Professor Per Ingvar Bronima, for a reason. He actually was the designer, the inventor, and the researcher that came across dental implants. 1952, 1950s actually, he was working uh, in the laboratory on metal inserts of uh, animals, in particular rabbit bones. And in one of the materials that he used was titanium. He used chromium, he used stainless steel, he used aluminum, he used many, many things, as well as titanium. And by chance, he discovered that the titanium really stayed rigid in the, jaw, in the bone of the rabbit. There is actual union of the bone cells to the titanium. And hence, being a, a brilliant man, you know, I, I always feel that you can be brilliant in your research, but the application of that brilliance is what makes you truly brilliant. And so he came up with, why don't I try this, like, you know, in the mouth, beside the feet and the, and the jaw, but he's an orthopedic surgeon, yeah? And so he came with the concept and the idea of, let's put it in the mouth and see, there's so many people here in my country that's missing a tooth, let me see whether that works. And through that innovative research of his, and his uh, scientific mind, uh, dental implants developed by leaps and bounds, such as the Roman, Nobel, Ostem, Zimmer, Ankylos, and Newton, Zero, and many others. There's so many, over 200 types of implants, and every day I'm sure another implant system is coming on the market. But what's important to know is no matter what implant system you use, if you do go to your dentist to get an implant done, uh, you should find out. I have many patients who come to me uh, from overseas as well and they sit in the chair and there's some issues with the implants and they want me to help them first thing i will ask is do you know what's the type of implant that you have in your mouth 90 percent of them do not know and this is bad you should if you have anything down to your mouth just as if you have a titanium uh, hip replacement in your hip you must know what is the material that was used similarly in the mouth the type of implant that was used is important why is it important? 
because all these names of these implants I've told you are all different in the way it is designed. That's in architecture. A little bit of difference in the facade, a little bit of difference in the corner, a little bit of difference in the hex design or the internal configuration makes it a totally different implant system. And you cannot simply uh, pick a, a set of tools to work on that particular implant because it will not work with another implant. They're all different. Do do that. If you do later on decide to have an implant and your dentist recommends you one, you must know what type of implant and you must also good to know the dimension of the implant and the height of the implant. Um, did we just lost the talk? Yeah, screen is unshared as well. Uh, okay, while we waiting for that to come back, uh, if you have any questions, um, do post it in the um, uh, our chat box. Yes, yeah. uh, okay. okay. Just come back. The talk? Okay. So okay, sorry. Right. Yeah, I'm here again. Okay, so sorry. So please do find now the dimensions of your that. I guess we lost her again. Uh, can our technical uh, assist her on this? See if there's any problem. Or um, you guys want to be the one who is sharing the screen? Okay, I'm so sorry for this. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> stable, huh? Um, yeah, true. <laughs> are we good again? Okay, okay, all right, yes. Yes, we're back again. Mm. Oh, thank God. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so now this slide is to show you the consequence of teeth loss. Yeah, Many people don't realize and lose a tooth, whether front tooth or the back tooth, and leave it just like that, just because I have, you should have 32 teeth in your mouth. You lose one tooth, you say, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. If it's your last tooth, you lose two teeth, still fine. But if you lose more than that, then you're going to have to be, you're going to come into a situation, you're going to get a compromised occlusion already. So let's have a look at how a loss of a molar tooth, this is the first molar tooth, can lead to disastrous long-term effect on the arrangement of all your other teeth. You look at this slide here, you see that, you look at this slide here, you see that there is, tilting of the teeth, the back teeth, as a result of the loss of the space, there is over eruption of upper teeth coming downwards, occupying the space. You end up with spacing on your front teeth that leads to caries and decay, and a host of other problems uh, with gum issues will arise. So when you have loss of, imagine, all your molar teeth at the back, for instance, either one side or both sides, you will end and may end up with painful jaw joints as well. Why? Because the way you're chewing now, the way you're using your teeth is, is altered. You are uh, chewing in a very slanted way or in a very slightly different way than you should normally have done. And the end result is long term, your joints may give a problem for you. Okay? okay let's so what are the available options for teeth replacement? Traditional, traditional, traditional partial dentures, full dentures. Let's go on that. We don't want that. Okay. So now we look at the new options of teeth replacement. Bridges, as we know, just like the London Bridge that we see up there, is a concept whereby you replace the missing tooth using support on either side. 
And in this case, if it is a front tooth, a single front tooth, the left tooth and the right tooth are also cut down to become smaller in size in order that, as you can see, you can fit the bridge on it. A single crown is a single tooth. Examples of two, three unit bridges, one on the front tooth and one on the back tooth. And clearly you can see the supporting teeth have both been cut. The supporting teeth have both been cut and made smaller. Kalau gigi sebelah punya belah tu, if your supporting teeth were originally healthy and nothing wrong with them, you would appreciate that it is such a crime to have to cut them down to a smaller size just for the sake of anchoring your bridge. Particularly to me, if it is your front teeth. Because your front teeth, the way they are, they are very precious. You shouldn't try and damage them, cut them, it's not necessary. So here we have the situation of what a bridge is all about. Now let's go on to an implant situation. In an implant situation, imagine that you have lost three teeth or four teeth or even more than that. Here, we do not need your supporting teeth on either side. We do not need this, this tooth, nor do we need this tooth as a support for your bridge. Here, what we look for is your bone. Do you have enough bone in front? Do you have the right quality of bone? Do you have the height of bone? Do you have the width of bone? If all of those criteria are fulfilled, then as you can see in this picture, you can see the shadow of the implant being placed on left side, the shadow implant being placed on the right side. And once the implant has become fused to your natural bone, you can then construct this three unit bridge to sit nicely into the implant abutments. We call them abutment. This is abutment, that's an abutment. Okay, similar concept with the posterior. Again, Implant is already inside the bone here. Implant inside the bone here. We wait until the bone and the implant has become fused. And then we put its abutment, the attachment, onto which the three unit bridge now will sit on. So what is the most important thing? The most important thing is good bone. The most important thing is healthy gum tissue. And the most important thing is that the other teeth are also in the correct position and correct alignment. If you had not done anything to this area and left it empty, this front tooth would have moved backwards. And once it moves backwards, you have a space right here, which allows foot trap, which makes your smile unattractive, which can lead to dental caries and gum disease. Okay, okay. let's go on. So what is a dental implant? If you look at it, you see the difference between what is created by Allah. God has created this beautiful uh, arrangement of uh, the way the tooth is put in the jawbone. And this is the artificial replacement here. So we look at the natural situation. The crown and the root is seamless. It's one piece. It is supported in the bone by ligaments. These are called suspensory ligaments. The periodontal ligaments help to attach the root to the bone. And by so doing, it allows a little bit of suspension. So when you bite on it, the tooth will move up and down a wee bit. You can't even feel it, but it actually does move a little bit in order that you don't feel a, a, a strong uh, impact from the upper and the lower. However, in an implant situation, as we see here, we have a joint. The joint is between the crown and the implant, the true implant. And then we have this implant abutment, the connector, as we call it as well. And then artificial crown is put on top. Yeah. The most important thing about this implant is the union of the bones to the surface of the implant. Implants are usually made of titanium. And titanium has been found to be biocompatible, bioinert, and not all will cause you any corrosion, reaction, or rejection. Although there are very, very uh, we lost your screen again. <laughs> I think the how we implant in the in the, our own gum it looks a bit scarier than. 
<laughs> how we been constructed. <laughs> Maybe you can reach it again out of screen. <laughs> Okay, um, to the participant, if you have any question, you can share in our uh, chat box uh, and Q&A chat box. In the meantime, I really can... apologize. I thought what happened to the implant is just dropping, yeah. uh, the, uh, the internet is dropping every time. Yeah, There's an issue with this. <laughs> but, uh, no problem, I, uh, no really problem. So sorry. <laughs> okay, but um, so basically, it is just an artificial root, artificial material put into your jawbone, but it is accepted by your body. Now, many questions that's asked by my patient. Uh, will it, you know, um, will it corrode? Says no. Will it um, uh, make a sound and I go through immigration? You know, does it alert immigration? The answer is no. Does it, uh, is it susceptible to lightning? Because I have something metal in my mouth. The answer is no. In fact, actually, it is very friendly to you. And if you are to do any imaging modalities such as CT scan or MRI, you'll find that the implant will not cause as much problems with the images that you receive compared to if you have an amalga filling or you have a denture or you have a crown, metal crown. Those will give you much more problems than an, uh, titanium. Titanium does not cause uh, image scatter. Okay. So now let's go on. So what are the benefits of dental implant for teeth replacement? So let's understand it. Number one, it can be perfect in form, appearance, and function. This is Angie. Angie is 21 years of age. She came to me, she's a university student, and she also was often always, the tooth loss is, is due to trauma. She was playing with her friends and all that, and she fell down and she hurt the front tooth. And the whole front tooth came out in one piece. Uh, you can imagine a 21 years old girl in the university. This is a life threatening uh, situation. It's, it's unacceptable. The whole world came crashing down when you lose your front tooth like that. So fortunately, the mom brought her to see me and we had done what we had told uh, similarly with Captain Dean earlier. And you can just about see the, the image of the implant down there, just inside there. The soft tissue is lovely, as you can see. And what's very important is she maintains she maintains a very good oral hygiene. So her, her gum situation, gum health is excellent throughout. And this is very important when you're having implants. Yeah, you cannot have a situation where your gums are unhealthy. And you don't, you know, take care of it. You're putting a commitment into your mouth. You're putting an investment into your mouth. So therefore, you want to take. So at the end result is Angie is rehabilitated, we call it, with a nice, beautiful implant crown here, but you would not know that she's had anything, any accident or anything wrong with her front teeth, and she was overjoyed, okay, because she was going to get engaged soon. Okay, next slide. Now, crowns, or the materials that we use for implant crowns are so lifelike, they mimic nature. As you can see, when this is properly done and done by a very good architect, it's almost imperceptible. You can't tell that whether the, the tooth that we see here, the temples on the right side, is a real thing or an artificial one once displaced inside the mouth. The color can be matched, the anatomy can be matched, the shape can be matched, the context can be matched. So you really do not know that you had an implant inside. The metal of the implant titanium will not show at all. Everything is submerged, everything is below the gums, and you don't see anything at all. Yeah? Okay. What you see here, the cavity or the hole that I show you here, is the excess hole through which the implant screw will go into and attach itself to the implant in the bone. Okay. So again, another patient, Miss Niza. Niza was a Niza is another girl who was going to get married. And she again fell down, had an accident, motor car accident actually, and lost her upper left hand tooth. And instead of using a three unit traditional concept of cutting the teeth on either side, we left it undisturbed. We just went in for a single implant in here and replaced her. And so in an X-ray, if you were to look at it, you will see it this way. You will see the implant in an X-ray as this. 
Here is the implant magnified and large picture of the implant. Yeah, and that's the implant and that's the tooth on top. Here is in the panoramic x-ray and here is Miss Nizel on her wedding day. Looking really nice and she was so again, so happy, so elated that she has a, a beautiful smile. So implants preserve natural teeth. That's point number one to know. Number one is your natural teeth are preserved and you do not have to uh, uh, lose any other tooth. You only need your bone. Your bone must be healthy, your soft tissue must be healthy, and you as a person must be healthy. And we'll come to that a bit later. This one. Here is another example, another uh, patient with implant replacement now on the posterior tooth. As you can see here, this is the implant and this is the tooth. And in this particular x-ray, I would like to highlight to you You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen who's hearing to me, uh, there's some days which are not good days. <laughs> In life is like that, right? I think today is not one of my best days. But I hope whatever I'm telling you and the message that I get across to you when the internet is not down, when the slides are not running around, uh, will be sufficient for you to appreciate. I'm so sorry with all of the little glitches, yeah? Okay, back to the, to the x-ray. In the x-ray, you will see that the implant is placed in the posterior area. And please notice one very important fact I would like to highlight here is the fact that the point is, is the fact that the implant is just below the sinus. Okay, now we are we are putting the implant just below the sinus, and this is a very important fact because when you put the implant in, of course, you do not want to go into the sinus. The sinus, as you know, is an empty space, and you don't put the implant into an empty space because then the implant will not be held well. So it must be within the confines of the bone. Now we go to the next one. Implants also help to conserve natural bone. We talked a little bit earlier about the process of aging and as we age, we lose bone, whether we like it or not. Particularly if we have removed teeth, as you can see in this picture here, this lady, she is actually a British lady. She lost one tooth here. She lost more teeth at the back. And she has for some reason kept this one tooth in between, which is funny looking tooth, not very attractive either. But please look at the bone itself. You'll notice that the bone is a bit shrunken, particularly at the back here, because these teeth were lost over oh, five, six, ten years ago, long time ago. And when you lose a tooth, when you lose a tooth, the bone will shrink by about 30% already. So the sooner you replace it with an implant, the sooner you'll be able to preserve that bone, as we see here in this other picture, in this lady here, who fortunately had implants done early, and so where the arrows are, this is where there's an implant here. And at the back there, there's another implant. And she was able to have all her teeth back in form and function uh, as, as, is, as close as is natural. So uh, point number two, never leave teeth which are lost, untreated, unreplaced for a long, long time. You will lose your bone. So let's go on. So, here is our examples of some patients who are unfortunate enough to have lost so many teeth. And this can happen, and particularly more a few years back during the times of our parents, I think. Now, most of us are educated, most of us are very aware of the need for good oral hygiene, oral care, and preservation of teeth. However, here are two examples of a partially lost dentition, and this picture here, and in the other picture, a totally identical situation. And because you've lost teeth for a long, long time, you see at the back here, there's hardly any bone on either side. And there's only a little bit bone in front, which is fortunate. With that little bit of bone in front, we're able to put two implants and on it will clip the full lower denture. This is about the best replacement you could do for your grandfather, for your grandmother, for your grand auntie or whoever who has lost all their teeth and have no more teeth to anchor the denture on. It is a very, very sad situation when they don't have teeth in the mouth and you see them chewing and eating with great difficulty, although they will not tell you. So you can appreciate that the food is only partly digested. The nutrition absorption is compromised. And that's why oftentimes they are not so healthy. In this more fortunate situation of this uh, gentleman, where he still has bone all around, we were able to put five implants into him and some implants on top as well and to rehabilitate him and rejuvenate his 
oral status. So let's have a look at Mr. Kamal, I think, at completion. Here is that gentleman who had the five implants at the bottom and a couple of implants on top. The teeth are placed, they are fixed. He doesn't need to remove them. So it's a much better solution and option. And in the x-ray, yes, the x-ray looks a little bit, oh, alarming. The x-ray looks, wow, oh, you, wow. It must be painful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The truth of the matter is, in such a situation, of course, you do the procedure under general anesthesia so that the patient does not feel the pain and does not feel the discomfort. And the healing process, believe it or not, whether it's one implant, two implants, 10 implants, the pain threshold that you feel is really, really, really minimal. Why? Because you are provided with pain relief medication, you are provided and instructed how to take care, and you are informed on the necessity to look at your diet during the period of healing. But truthfully, a good surgeon will be able to do this with minimal pain. Yeah? Okay. So we know we talked about age changes with time, and we know that the soft tissue changes with time. But what we often don't appreciate enough is the changes of the bone structure with time. The soft tissue changes together with the bone. Similarly, therefore, you can see the difference between this lady who's lost her teeth upper and lower and the resorption of the bone internally and the replacement of teeth, whatever the method of replacement, either you have a full denture or you have an implant supported denture, you will see that the difference in the appearance of the patient is very marked. When there is no chewing process to keep the bone in shape, the bone will shrink. That is why elderly people look, you know, uh, different from us, not only because of the soft tissue support is lost, but also because the height of the bone, the width of the bone, the vertical height of the bone, the vertical dimensions are also lost. Okay, let's move on. So I have often frequently been asked questions like this. Am I a suitable candidate for dental implant? Uh, the good news is I find that in Malaysia, many, many people are very educated now about implants, implant therapy, and many come in with a request for implant therapy, and they've heard about it, they know about it, and they have their reservations, and they come in and want you to know, you know, can I have it or not? So let's discuss about this subject matter. We are going to discuss and show you three different cases of where they have lost their tooth, and what are the indications or contraindications that's necessary for us to consider when we're talking about dental implant placement, yeah? Yeah. Here we have the patient as a center. Here we have the three different patients that we will require uh, implant replacement, whether it is on the side or on the front or just a single bottom tooth. It's irrespective. Every patient that comes in is assessed on its own. Every patient that comes in will require a few um, considerations. Consideration number one, do you have any medical problems I need to know of? Do you have diabetes? Do you have heart problem? Do you have any allergies to any medication? These are very important facts for us. And are you taking any other medications that can compromise or delay healing, like aspirin drugs or flavic drugs for heart disease? Secondly, we ask, do you have any dental risk factors? And this means mainly, how good are you in your oral care? Are you meticulous? Are you compliant? Do you value your teeth? If you don't, then why come in and waste money into putting an implant? If you say, mm, yeah, okay, um, I do, I, I brush my teeth. Do you floss? Uh, no. Do you rinse? No. Then why come in and have a dental implant? Because dental implants are a very costly affair. You want to protect your investment. Then you want to find out what are the anatomic risk factors. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Ah, great. Okay. <laughs> the anatomic risk factors is in relation to the internal oral situation. Yeah? Do you have enough bone? Do you not have, have enough soft tissue? Is your bone of sufficient height? Etc. Etc. One very important consideration we do not like for people who come in asking for implants is smoking. Because smoking contraindicates in a big way because it delays healing. You know, smokers always have problems in their mouth. I'm sorry, whoever is smoking out there. Uh, healing becomes compromised. And particularly, imagine if you're diabetic, 
where you already have the situation of compromised healing, then you smoke on top of that, which is another major factor considered uh, urban, uh, absolutely contraindication. The end result is you can still have the implant procedure done, but your value that you get out of your implant, the longevity that you get out of your implant is very guarded. It may not last you a lifetime as you would want it to be. When you put an implant, you want it to last a lifetime and it can last a lifetime if you know how to take care of it. So, okay, before the treatment is done, you go to a clinician, whoever you choose to go to, the clinician decides on the treatment approach that needs to be done for you, whether it is an immediate implant placement, whether the delayed method of placement, whether to put just one implant, whether to put five implants, that all is agreed upon. Then what is agreed upon is the biomaterials that need to be used. Sometimes when you do an implant, you need to do additional procedures. And in that additional procedures, you may have to use, for instance, bone substitutes because you don't have enough bone. You may have to use what we call membranes to cover over the bone substitute. There the are materials that we use. So all that must be taken into consideration, must be thought about before the treatment is done. So discussion, consultation, x-rays, images, models will be very important. Very important as well is the age. We do not do implants or implants are not encouraged for very young people. We do not do implants or we delay doing implants for anybody below the age of 16, 17, 18. Why? Because you are still growing. Your conditions in the mouth are still changing. Your teeth are still moving. If you put the implant in right at the, when you are 16, when you are 20, your tooth may have moved downwards a little bit. And suddenly your implant tooth is higher up in the rest of the teeth. So we don't do it during those times. Beyond that, or when your growth has stopped, that will be the best time, the ideal time to put dental implants. And what is the age limit that you would do? There's no age limit. You can be 90 years of age, you can be 80 years of age, you can be 60 years of age, so long as you're healthy and you fulfill all the criteria that's needed you are a candidate for implants. So let's discuss case uh, number one, case study, 68-year-old Indonesian lady, a very lovely lady, she comes to me all the way from Jakarta. She's diabetic, but under medication and under control. Now that's good. If you're diabetic, you control your medication, that's fine. If you're hypertensive, you control your medication, that's fine. If you have a heart disease, you follow your medication properly, that's fine. What we do not, what people do not, monitor their health well and they also want to do implants then you are not getting value out of it okay she is also on anti on anti-clotting drugs for her heart but she um, is uh, very compliant uh, she unfortunately is also on the onset of osteoporosis now very two important points here if you're on blood thinners or anti-clotting blood medication you have to stop before the procedure is done why? In order that you do not have excessive bleeding. Otherwise, but, uh, the blood won't stop or you know, half a day to one day and you get panic for nothing. So usually we ask patients to stop three to four days before the procedure. If you have osteoporosis and you have not taken any medication for osteoporosis treatment, then you are possible for us to do implants on you. Although we have to select the type of implants, we have delayed the treatment completion. However, if you're on biphosphonate therapy, that means you're taking supplements to enhance your bone uh, quality and bone density, uh, that can compromise the outcome of implant therapy because patients who are on biphosphonate therapy, often the bone becomes a bit keras, a bit hard, and there's less nutrition in the bone. And if you do the surgery, the healing is compromised. So Iborosini in stage two, as you can see, has had actually three implants on top and we managed them to complete her stage three, as you can see, looking really much younger than she is. She was in her late 60s and she ended up looking like in her late 40s. Because of course, we touched up on the other teeth on either side, top and bottom, to make her appear more youthful. Yeah, she has been wearing denture for over eight years and now she can enjoy her food better. Another patient, Mr. Varun Kumar, age 40 years, he came with congenitally missing lateral teeth. That means born without the lateral teeth on either side did not appear. So he got two front teeth and he didn't have teeth on either side of two front teeth. Okay, and he has been wearing denture for a long time. Of course, that's not a satisfactory situation. He is a diplomat, he works in the Indian embassy and he is 
uh, takes care of his health very well, he's very conscious of everything. But because of the fact that the teeth were lost for a long time ago, or there was no teeth there, you can see in the stage two picture, the yellow line outlines to you that the shape of his bone in that area is inadequate for us to put in implants. If we were to put implants in there, it would be protruding out of the bone. So therefore, he had to have a procedure called bone augmentation, addition to the implant size. So, um, so you see modification of the landscape, modification of the place where we want to put the implant by adding artificial bone in these areas here. We did add artificial bone. Uh, the bone was uh, obtained from his chin. It would transfer it here and then we fixed it, we secured it, we allowed it to heal. After about three months, we then went in to put these green dots or the green implants. So let's have a look at him. Now, this is Mr. Varun Kumar from starting to where he was in stage one. The stage two shows you the three implants inside and stage three, Mr. Varun Kumar as he is right now. Again, a very happy man, very, very pleased with the outcome. And he you know, is overjoyed and he's now, I'm on his way to become a diplomat. So frequently asked questions also is very surely, all of you have been saying, looking at my pictures, say, oh, yeah, painful, aduma, sakitnya, la, ni. The answer is, no, pain is really very, very minimal. And let's listen to Mr. Van Lui, who has gone through implant treatment and bone augmentation. I recently completed my implant treatment. Uh, I lost one of my molars and uh, we started the procedure to extract it. And then I had some bone augmentation uh, and uh, with the sinus lifting. Uh, and uh, recently the implant was placed and uh, it feels fantastic. Uh, it uh, hasn't disturbed the other teeth uh, and uh, I'm back to normal again. So it's perfect. Thank you. Mr. Van, Mr. Van Lui is a typical case of patients who have had implant treatment. Of course, you asked me, will not there be swelling? Certainly, there was swelling. He had a bit of a swelling on his upper right cheek for a few days following the surgery because he had what we call bone augmentation, bone addition procedure, not a straightforward procedure. But he was not in any pain. He was able to talk, he was able to go to work, he was able to eat like normal. Of course, the choice of diet during this procedure is slightly softer food, porridge, and you know, common sense must prevail. Huh? Okay. So let's now very quickly run through in as clean as possible and diagrammatically what the implant procedure looks like. Because if I will show you the real true pictures, you may not like it. So here we are. First, we have a diagnosis and planning. We come to the clinic, we diagnose you, we do the x-rays, we do the models, we do the pictures, we agree what we're gonna do. And then we put the implant insertion. The implant insertion is done mainly, usually under local anesthesia on the dental chair. Of course, when you're replacing teeth in the mouth maybe I guess you need to upload it in the screen <laughs> it's Murphy's law you know yes uh, they, unfortunately dear 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 colleagues out there my sincere apologies uh, so, somebody's so scared on it <laughs> <laughs> maybe they, maybe the <laughs> maybe the slightest scared of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay okay, okay. after the implant has fused the bone you wait for about four to six months and then you put in the connector and finally the crown on top this is the stages yeah what is important here regular review and maintenance not maintainer yeah maintenance uh you cannot just simply have implant investment in your mouth and then you don't go to the dentist at all you don't take care of it you don't come in and review when you're proper you can't do that because then you know things can go wrong even if you drive an expensive car whatever the latest car lamborghini maserati whatever it is it still has to go to the workshop to be maintained so it's the same thing with the implant treatment So let's go on. Another frequently asked question is what are the cost implications? I come across this beautiful museum of the future of Dubai, which costs 580 million ringgit. 
Masya Allah. But I just love this building. Architect Sean Killer, the name of the architect, did a brilliant job. I don't know what you architects all think about it, but a lay person like me look at the building and say, my goodness, mashallah, it's so beautiful. I love it. And I'm presuming the, the, the calligraphy on top is some ayat, ayat Quran surah or something. I don't know, but it's amazing. To me, it is amazing. So when we talk about implants, what are the cost implications of dental implants? Actually, you have to answer it in this way. What is the worth of your life? What is your quality of life worth? The answer to that is priceless. So when deciding with dental implants and conventional restoration, studies have shown that long-term implants are less expensive. Why? Because once you place implants at the mouth and you take care of it, actually, you don't need to do anything more. You just have to go regularly for your cleaning, normal scaling, polishing. But if you were to do a crown or a bridge, that's Right. It's a very rich that blood on the bridge two to three times to exchange to change it as you go along in your years and your age. Um, for the replacement of multiple teeth, dental implants surely are a bit higher in initial cost, but the long-term improvement in your quality of health, your ability to masticate, your, your nutritional status, you cannot compare between a denture and a implant retain prosthesis. So on average, I know the burning question is what is the price of an implant? The answer to that is it varies. It varies whether you are having a premier brand, it varies whether you have a, a quality brand, it varies whether you have problems in your mouth that requires you to have additional procedures, it varies whether it's a straightforward procedure, it varies whether it is um, in, in a very demanding location and aesthetically compromised position. So a ballpark figure, everybody loves ballpark figure. Ballpark figure can range anything from uh, 8K to 15K, depending on issues relating to your oral status, your bone quality, soft tissue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But on average, around 9 to 10K would be the, about the right price, okay? I know architects look for certain things. They look for proportional skin, they look for design form and function, aesthetics, movement and contrast, longevity, sustainability, and more, 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 more. I'm sure there's a lot more to that. But these are the things that I picked up, which to me has got a lot of bearing with dentistry as well and in the mouth. So here we are talking about landscape in the mouth. Here are different people who have different form of appearances, as you can see, uh, are good. Foundation in the upper left picture is the best kind of foundation we like here if we're going to put implants in. This on the right, as you know, and there's loss of bone throughout already. And that is a difficult case to handle. Here on the bottom is a case where over exuberant landscape of excess gum tissue and excess bone. Again, a situation where a lot of additional needs, procedures needs to be done before you can put implants inside. When you have inadequate bone, these are examples of inadequate bone in localized areas. Look at this picture, the first picture, bone loss from extraction. I mentioned earlier, when you lose a tooth, particularly a molar tooth, and you don't replace it, what happens is that the bone shrinks. The bone shrinks in two dimensions, a horizontal dimension and vertical dimension. And both dimensions can lead to a situation where the bone becomes so narrow and so slim and thin that you can't put anything there. So the end result is what? Either you wear a denture in this picture, uh, picture, either you wear a denture to replace the missing tooth, which is such a crime and very uncomfortable, you will not like it, or you have to cut this tooth and cut this tooth to put a bridge inside. The reasons of which we have already explained. However, if you have recently lost your tooth, for instance, or you do a procedure, additional procedure where you regain back your bone width, as you can see here, this is now a beautiful site for dental design. Here's another example of a loss of bone as a result of extraction. This in the posterior, this in the anterior, again, another picture. Sometimes it is not so much insufficient bone. This lady is a sufficient bone. There is not sufficient soft tissue because you can see because of the trauma that she had on the front tooth, she has lost some tissue here. 
there's not enough soft tissue and therefore we have to augment it we have to put some artificial material here as you see if you look very closely you'll see it but if you look at the glance you may you may miss it but in the end you are managed uh, able to replace the uh, missing teeth unfortunately this patient we call it unfortunate because her lip line this is what we call a lip line when you smile your lip line if it's so high and you're exposing so much of gum tissue uh, becomes very complicated to replace anything because it is so obvious. But if your gum line is low, I'm uh, sorry, if your lip line is low and it's just covering halfway into the teeth, that's the perfect lip position. It's a much easier situation to handle. We talk about aesthetics, internal aesthetics. When you design a house, your design concept and design thought process always looks into internal aesthetics, internal alignment, internal arrangement, et cetera, et cetera. We as well do the same thing. We want the internal configuration space and uh, volume of tissue and soft tissue must be perfect for us. So here we have a situation on the upper uh, right side where after replacement of the missing tooth, it fits with the upper nicely, the occlusion is good, the proportion is correct, and it on function feels just like normal. And when we look at it in terms of aesthetics, it looks great. You can't even tell which one is the implant tooth, which is this one, of course. Slight difference between this and this, because this is not a very attractive old tooth. Here is a much nicer looking, freshly uh, rejuvenated teeth. So you can immediately see the aesthetics of it. Clearly, uh, there's no comparison. It is a, definitely a, a much enhanced application. Here are some other examples of patients that we've done. Uh, who've had um, a combination of implants as well as aesthetic rejuvenation of their teeth. Uh, Patricia up there, uh, before, before and after, yeah, uh, from a, a very nice lady. He has a gentleman from Melbourne, literally dragged into the clinic by the wife, sincerely, uh, uh, seriously afraid of dentistry. He came in like that, and in three weeks, he went home to Melbourne like that. Wife was overjoyed, he himself was overjoyed, and now he's a totally different man. He was hiding himself behind the desk because he's a librarian. Now he's no longer behind the desk, he's in the front of the desk. Okay. All right, it's okay, that's one. These are some other examples as well. This lady, Mrs. Kumar. Uh, Mrs. Kumar is so cute. His, her two front teeth, this two, this, and this is actually swinging in the breeze. Every time she closes her mouth, these two front teeth will be dancing up and down, up and down. Open, it comes down, uh, close, it dances up. Anyway, we managed to finish her to look like that with some implants and some aesthetic improvement. This lady just wanted enhancement of the face, uh, some crowns and, and veneers to improve uh, into a better occasion, uh, looking uh, appearance. This lady uh, from Sabah, again, she fell down, she tripped and she broke her front tooth we had to remove this particular tooth we had to repair this tooth and this is the before after and this is the after so i'm going to show you another case a final case of a small makeover the gentleman's name is mr sharif i believe yes mr sharif mr sharif came like that i really don't understand how people can go around with their teeth like that but whatever it is mr sharif came like that and she told me, Dr. Sharifa, my son is getting married in three months' time. Can you please do something to me so that I will be a proud father-in-law? Uh, yeah, Jay Sharif, <laughs> I told him, why do you come in such a short time period? I need a little bit more time frame. But anyway, however, we had to make some drastic decisions. Mr. Sharif had to agree to remove a couple of teeth because there's no way I can do anything about this tooth and make it look nicer because it's already protruding out of the mouth. Is it pointed? Yes. And this tooth is literally hanging out of the mouth. So I extracted a couple of teeth. Next. That's him now. When he came into, we had to clean him up. His uh, gum situation wasn't so great. He's diabetic on top of that. And he smokes as well on top of that. Okay. All the comorbidities that we do not like. Anyway, we gave him a temporary. This is him with a temporary after we have removed all the teeth, we clean him up, we put the implants and all that, and that's his temporary teeth. And after a period of about three and a half months, we gave him his final prosthesis, and that's him at startup, and that's him in time for his son's wedding, looking really macho now. Of course, he showed me his uh, wedding photos after that, and he was smiling mola to mola all the time. 
We also look at design for main function, as I told you earlier already, when we're constructing the prosthesis for the implants, we have to consider what material we are using in order to rehabilitate and prepare and restore. And the material of choice is, we know already the implants are titanium. The, the structure that's fabricated on it is using a combination of stainless steel and chromium, uh, cobalt chromium uh, to ensure that you have a nice strong framework in order that he can use it to function, to chew, to bite, and to you know, normal uh, daily utilization of the teeth. Uh, so, in conclusion, I live with these parting words. If you take care of your mind, your body will thank you. If you take care of your body, your mind will thank you. But if you take care of your teeth, dear ladies and gentlemen, and replace it whatever way you want to replace it, your body and your mind will thank you. So I end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dato. Uh, this is very <laughs> inspired words. <laughs> It made me think again, I have to go to dentist. <laughs> it applies to everyone. It doesn't matter to architect, to engineers, yes, to lawyers, true. to general people as well. Yeah. yeah, true. The only thing that is that sometimes when, especially when we lost our teeth at the, um, I mean, like an elder or like 70s or mm -hmm. 80s, Sometimes they say that ah, I don't care la, I would die. Some why you need to implant all this thing? <laughs> they become like an issue and an argument in between whether that to to take care of your gums and everything, and then your mentality of like saying that I'm not gonna live long. Why you need to do all these things to me? <laughs> because they always say it's painful. So that's the key. True. Yeah, you true. Know, that's, that's absolutely true. My dad, my place, my implants in my dad's mouth was when mm. he was about 76 years of age, okay? Mm. I mean, he was wearing a denture and I said, uh, well, enough is enough. I, I really cannot tense, stand this, you wearing a denture <laughs> yes. when I'm, you know, doing this kind of things. I used to drag him on the chair and we fought with no exceptions. No, 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 you have to accept it. <laughs> we did it and everything. And after it's all done, he said, oh my God, such a difference. I enjoy my food yes. much better now. And uh, I, I, you know, I can speak better, I, I, you know, when I, read my Quran, my pronunciation is better, everything mm. is better. Yeah, and you know, he's a much happier person as well. Mm. Yes, yeah, true. It's affect the whole lifestyle. I okay, you're frozen again. <laughs> All right, so... Well, I, I re can I share something? Ah uh, yes, uh, uh, Taza, yes, you have anything? I don't know whether you can. Not sweeter. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. All right, so. Can I share something? Ah uh, yes, my architect. Mom, yeah. Yeah, my mom has uh, her implant when she was seventy-five. Uh, all this while she was smiling with her hands covering her mouth. Uh huh. Now she will be smiling with her other hands. I will be elsewhere of covering her mouth. So I was like. I'm so happy and she's really, really happy. I don't know. I don't know. I think she has more social life now. I think she yeah. has more social life than me. <laughs> but too, very, very correct. They are a totally different person, you know, when particularly you fix their front teeth. My goodness me, they they emerge, the real person emerge, what they were when they were in their 20s and 30s come back again. Yeah. <laughs> to image the 20 years too, I'll get worried. La. <laughs> <laughs> the personality, la. personality yeah, la. <laughs> you know, when you are that sort of personality, you're always that sort of personality. Of course, you change. Okay. Yes. I, uh, I, believe, okay. I, believe, I believe what the doctor, what the doctor has suggested is really, really important for us architects, especially when we, we always see our clients, be it online, because even online, you can still see a person's smile. Uh, yes, if we go to site, we see clients, you know, and then the, our our front or our presentation, our presence, our presentation, the way we look does affect the client's position. So imagine smiling with no teeth. Or <laughs> it is quite, quite disturbing. You know? it's it, quite disturbing. Yeah. True. Imagine mm -hmm. lawyers having to talk a lot with teeth, which is not. Acceptable, yeah. I yes, mean, it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> you, you imagine you have to score the contractors and the doctors coming out like that. It looks funnier than scarier. <laughs> imagine if you have a denture in your mouth and you are, when you're talking, the denture comes out. That yeah. can happen as well, you know. It has to be a good comedy. All right, so we have uh, Puan Azalina uh, raise her hand. Uh, do you want to chat with the doctor, please? Uh, Puan Azalina? Can the host unmute her? Yeah. She's still muted. All right, so if anyone has a question, you can post in the link um, or maybe you can drop it on the chat box. But I think the most of the question I have earlier, for example, like this one, I can tell Muntaza, if patient had a ready prescription ubat cari darah due to the existing health condition, uh, boleh tak go for a teeth implant? But I guess she, you just answer the question just now, but maybe you can repeat the answer. Yes. I can elaborate further on it. On mm, Muntaza. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, upon Azalina. Yeah. Um, actually, this is a very good question because a lot of elderly people are on some kind of medication, particularly heart medication, yeah, um, and, and heart medication for blood thinners and stuff. The most important thing to do would be the doctor should communicate with the physician. If you cannot get all the necessary information you want, often the patient tak tahu. Patient will come to you and say, oh, "I'm taking this, I'm taking that, but I don't know." You know, doctor says I must take and all that, but do not give you the full story. Then what we normally do is we locate the physician or the doctor, and we talk to the doctor, the physician, find out a bit more in depth about the health status of this individual, of this lady, uh, what is the issue that she has, what medication she's on, and oftentimes also what dosage she's taking, in order that then we can know. We can tell the physician that we are going to be doing this, this, this at this point in time. Uh, we are going to ask her to stop her medication. Uh, will you allow us to do that? So when you have the communication with the medical colleague already done and the patient himself or herself is aware of what's going to happen and when you must stop the medication, then it is not a problem doing the case. As I mentioned earlier, if you're on blood thinners, you have to stop usually three to four days prior to the procedure on the day of the procedure, three to four days before you stop. And then the next day after the procedure, you can continue again. Usually, there should be no problem. Would, would it affect? So, yes, uh, they will go through teeth implant. But remember, uh, as I said just now, to go through teeth implant, all uh, other conditions in the mouth must also be acceptable. Kalau want to do in elderly people sometimes they don't have enough bone. Ah, yeah? uh, yes. I think you may want it, but you may not have enough uh, tooth structure. A bone structure. Yeah. The only thing is that how to handle the the their psychology and facing the operation itself. Sometimes ah. everyone is like nagging la, continue to ah, that one yeah, is but so it's true, it's true. After the procedure, yeah. after the procedure, they may have a bit of discomfort. I mean elder people yeah, after uh, take pain much less well than younger mm. people. Yes, but sure. the the acceptance and the understanding and the whole process that the person has to go through must be made clear before mm. you begin. You cannot simply just say we put in and everything will be fine. No, everything is mm. not going to be fine. You have to understand mm. that there might be bleeding. You have to understand that uh, eating can be a bit compromised for a little while. You must understand that you cannot wear your mm. denture. You have to go without a denture for a certain period of time. So everything must be clear how to handle the bleeding post-surgery. So you cannot simply proceed without all that knowledge first. Mm, yes, there was sure. a question just now I saw about mm. uh, when a person dies, should ah, yes. the implant be removed? Yeah, this mm. is a question which was posed to me very, very early on when I started implants. So what is that I found is that I answered that question with another question. If you have had hip surgery done, hip replacement, where you've had a metal hip place for you or mm. artificial hip or something and you die do you have to remove that hip or not mm. 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 Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> never, never thought about that <laughs> the answer is no don't tell me you send the body to the surgeon please open my grandma's and hip remove and remove that hip. Hip and close it back. you don't do that yeah the, the the answer to it is because what is the purpose of the implant did you do the implant uh, because you want to look 
gorgeous because you're not happy with your teeth and you want the gorgeous perfection or do you do it because without it you're compromising your function your ability to speak oh, you're not and mm -hmm. then you become uh, in a uh, you know uh, issues related to psychology and stuff then it's fine an implant is fixed into your jawbone it doesn't need to be removed doesn't need mm -hmm. to be removed yeah. yes but Okay, so uh, I think hopefully with that will answer most of our questions that we will talk about implants now. Uh, okay, that got frozen again. Mm, should I read another question? Anyone else have any question? Please uh, uh, in the chat box. Ah, yes. Okay, that okay. All right. So I have another question here from the Dati Nawina Mohanawawi. In your last slide, talking about mind and body, thinking you thanking you for taking care of your teeth. Does this advocating, advocation uh, being informed to young mothers taking care of their children's teeth? My daughter, who is also a dentist, was posted in a rural clinic and found lots of problems with the children's teeth. What's your view or uh, about nurturing in the back? Yeah, well, your daughter was in a rural area, as you know. Mm. Um, truly rural means in, in now in our in our relations that it maybe in the interiors of Sabah or in you know Sarawak and stuff because there are not really many truly truly rural areas nowadays. Education is already so widespread. Uh, knowledge is widespread. The services of dental division of Ministry of Health is so widespread. By right, there should be very few people or few children who are having problems with their teeth. Mm -hmm. In the urban setting, yes, we hardly see children with bad teeth. Yes, there are, but the percentage has gone down so much, and partly because of education, awareness, and understanding of the parents in instilling and teaching their children. Partly because important is the fact that Malaysia has gone into water fluoridation oh, in the 1950s, you know, 1950s and 60s, water fluoridation in our country. And water fluoridation helps to keep the teeth healthy because fluoride incorporated into the developing teeth as it's been growing in your jawbone as a child makes the teeth stronger and hence we have now children with a lot of good healthy teeth what we cannot do we cannot change the arrangement of the teeth because that is genetically um, uh, the knee uh, inclined your parents have got teeth which are all over the place chances are the child will also have teeth all over the place if your parents have had long jaw, chances are your child may also have long jaw. That you can't change. But the quality of the tooth is very much different from what it is now compared to before. However, in rural areas, the problem is, even though you know, the, can we say, the, the, the monitoring of the child's health is not as important as trying to find a living, as trying to uh, you know, supplement the family. And keeping the child quiet by giving them sweets and sugar and sugary drinks is the easiest thing to do. A child cries, baby cries, or oh, bising, bising, bising. Oh, no, 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 no. Bagi syrup, get there. Bagi ribena. Huh? Bagi Milo, you know, money, money, Milo, sweet, sweet Milo. The child is happy, keep quiet. <laughs> keep them calm, keep them quiet. And that's one of, among the reasons why the child, children in rural areas have very bad teeth. Oh, you mm -hmm. could say that they can't afford to buy toothbrush. I don't know. Toothbrushes are so cheap these days. You yes, can, sir. It's mm -hmm. five ringgit, three ringgit, maybe. Uh, okay, the understanding of the use of the toothpaste, whether with toothpaste, without toothpaste, uh, for near uh, uh, fluoride toothpaste, non fluoride toothpaste, all that is relative, relative actually. The mm -hmm. most important aspect of oral care is brushing, brush it properly. But mothers in the rural areas may not have had that kind of educational understanding of how to brush properly. They will say, nah, 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 bruise gigi, nah, go and brush your teeth. And the child goes and just do whatever they want to do in the mouth, put it here, put it there, and come out and say, ah, I brushed my teeth already. On top of that, there's no checking and monitoring. So, yes, unfortunately, in the rural areas of Sabah, Strawa, you may still have children who have bad teeth. But by and large, in the urban areas, the number of children with bad teeth is so few and far between. Okay, um, I'll have I'm so sorry. Hang on, hang on a second. Just one little bit. I think there's a role oh. for you know, clinic kesihatan. Mothers, wherever you are nowadays, Kerajaan is what clinic kesihatan where the parents, the mothers go to during the antenatal checkup. And in some of the rural kesihatan clinics, antenatal checkup includes actually uh, education regarding oral health. 
because there are dentists that go into this clinic, the rural clinics, to give talks about oral health, to take care of mothers, how to take care. And it's during those times that education and, and, and information about how to take care of children's teeth is important. Yeah, true. I think um, education also plays an important role on these situations too. So at least the new mothers nowadays, hopefully they yes, have yes. more yeah. information. The young mothers are very good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I just have one question. Mother, that's mother, slightly... mother, sorry, sorry. Oh, yes. I have one question that's slightly offset from the implant situation. <laughs> For example, okay. people who have their, um, how to say, um, braces. Um, mm. Oh, this is this my experience. <laughs> I've been using braces for more than five years, but then when it comes to use a retainer, I kind of like giving up on <laughs> having something in my mouth. So, uh, for example, I'm not using retainer for quite some time. So is it possible it will be realigned again if I'm using a retainer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of the success secrets of orthodontics is actually maintaining. When you get your teeth realigned nicely and everything is super perfect, you have to keep it there. You can imagine, where, before you started orthodontics, your tooth was in a different position. And now you've moved it, you've tilted it, you've dragged it, you've put it into a new location, a new so-called perfect position. But the memory that the tooth has is that I'm not supposed to be here, I'm supposed to be there. So I want to go back to my original place. So what happens is with time, Little by little by little, the tooth actually gradually moves its way to go towards the direction it was originally. Hence the need for retainers and maintainers. Retainers are basically put into your back of your teeth with wire retainers, keeps the teeth in the new position. Or sometimes you are given like a night guard, night splint use at night in order that uh, the teeth is kept in that position. You may have to use your retainers for many years, four or five years sometimes in some people, depending on how your teeth move and when you had your orthodontics. If you've had your orthodontics when you're growing and you're 15 and 16 and 14, and 17 years of age, that's about the best time to have it. When you have it when you're in your 30s and 40s, that's when the memory of where the position was is even much mm. stronger and the teeth will want to go back to the original position. So maintenance and retainers are very important in orthodontics. Yeah. So if you do not use your retainer and your teeth or tooth have started to move and drift again, unfortunately, you have to go back to the orthodontist, get repositioned <laughs> again, and then fix it properly with the retainer. No shortcut. Seeing a dentist is quite scary. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. Choose your dentist wisely. There are many dentists out there, and the young dentists are all, you know, keep and happening these days, you know. We know, we know. we know how people don't like to come to see us. Every other patient that sits on my chair says, I don't like come to the dentist and I, no offense to you dr sharifa but i don't yeah, like no offense I don't like it. but i said okay i just smile at them i say i'm fine it's okay no problem let's do what we have to do and most of the time they're fine yeah i think the equipment that you use is kind of like but nightmares after that <laughs> yes i had a All question right. earlier when we were discussing something about uh wisdom teeth somebody asked me about wisdom teeth did somebody ask me earlier? Because I said, I'm, I'm open as long as time permits. I'm open to answer any question anybody has. And somebody earlier, earlier had asked something about wisdom teeth. Is that an issue? Anybody wants to know anything about wisdom teeth? Uh, yes, please. Anyone? I think... Uh, couldn't find that question. Yeah, not on a question, but who was oh. it? I can't remember now. Maybe our other presenter, tak? Cakap pasal oh, asking probably. about. Ah, <laughs> yeah, it? it's from our partner, but he or, she already left this. Oh, okay. so, uh, but never uh, mind. I can answer the her question, mm. and then you can pass the answer to her okay. <laughs> if you want. But for that, I will have to go to back to my slide. Can you back to the slide because I prepared a. a uh, 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 one slide just to answer that particular question Ooh, on wisdom teeth. Okay. Okay. Uh, where is it? Please, please. Hmm. This, by the way, is my clinic. Do drop by. That's information about my clinic. Uh, the slides behind it. Last slide. Uh, no, lower. No last slide. Okay. This is the slide I just want to show very quickly, yeah? Wisdom teeth problems, yeah? Uh, you see, all of us um, should have 32 teeth. 
Some of us have less. That's okay. No problem if you have less than 32. That's not an issue. But here, many of us have problems with the wisdom teeth where the arrow, the red arrows are showing you where the wisdom teeth are located. Yeah. Uh, if they come out nice and straight as in the first picture here that you see, this is fantastic. All the teeth are in the mouth, can't they? All arranged properly, no problems. Unfortunately, most times they come up crooked, as you can see here, the arrow here, circle, where the tooth is impacted. We call this impacted, both the left side and the right side, and various degrees of impaction, sometimes very close tight in contact, sometimes not so tight in contact. Here is also a different kind of impaction, whereby the, the tooth has not come out totality. The tooth is still stuck inside the jawbone. It can also cause a problem. Here, particularly, why I highlight this particular picture is, as, as you can see, there's a space here where food gets trapped all the time after you finish eating. And that prolonged space food trap will lead to decay. The tooth in front or beside it, this particular tooth will get a decay there. And in the end, you will have to come to us to remove that wisdom tooth because it is painful, there's decay, there's food trap, there's bad smell in your mouth, etc. And at the same time, this adjacent tooth now is decayed and needs some attention as well. In the worst case scenario, it also will end up needing root canal treatment. So yeah, the sister I wanted to explain to her about wisdom teeth. And in the mouth, there was a picture of wisdom teeth. No? Do we have the picture? Yeah. So this one we have to remove to be removed. Yes, definitely you have to remove. You have to remove. You mm -hmm. cannot keep it like that. If you keep it like that, you are 100% sure to have problems associated with gum problems and associated mm -hmm. with gum problems. Okay, understand. And these are very common, yeah? Very, very common. Mm. Uh, entrapment of upper wisdom teeth is not such a big deal as lower wisdom teeth. Oh, okay. <coughs> right, so hopefully anyone have a question on wisdom teeth? <laughs> <laughs> we can do like a this. <laughs> All right, so I have another question here uh, mm -hmm. from Eileen Tay. Can you share on the implication of mandibular torus in lower jaw? Little, you are frozen again. <laughs> okay, we wait for her. Ah, yes, okay. There's another question here. Mm. Yeah. Oh, interesting question. Mandibular torus in lower jaw. Implications. Uh, Miss Eileen, Miss T. Eileen, actually, mandibular torus, uh, or we call it uh, torus or tori mandibularis can also appear, by the way, in the upper jaw, in which case we call it torus palatinus because it's a Latin name. Okay, when it is on the mandible, means it's on the lower jaw. Oftentimes, this is just a protuberance of bone or excess bone that grows on the inner aspect. If you open your mouth, you look at lower teeth, on the bone, you'll find this block of tissue on the left-hand side or on the right side, just much a mbola. It's a small little, like little eggs. Sometimes small size, little eggs. Sometimes little size, like, I don't know, uh, brown, circular, smooth growth on your jaw. Uh, these are growth of the jaw in response to your function. When you have a jaw clenching habit, when you have a jaw grinding habit, when you're one of those, when you eat your food, you have to chew 30 times before you will swallow. Some people chew 10 times and off the food, uh, the food is swallowed. Some people need 30 times, 40 times before they can swallow because otherwise they are not satisfied. These are the kind of people who tend to have mandibular tori. It is just basically the response of the jaw bone, the mandible, to function. It does not need to be removed. It is not a tumor. It can grow bigger, but it will not cause you pain. Why? Because it's very, very slow growing, number one. Number two, it is on the inside of your jaw, under the tongue, so it doesn't disturb your speech. And number three, it's so smooth, you don't realize it. Uh, you don't even know you have it. Most people don't even know. However, I have seen those who had it really, really bad, where on both the left side and the right side, this growth of bone tissue just like literally comes together, and the tongue is sitting on top. But hey, he speaks well, he eats well, there's no problem, so don't do anything to it. Leave it alone. Oh, so you don't need to do any treatment to it, right? Uh, you would need to go to the dentist first or to the uh -huh. surgeon first or a surgeon 
to uh, to ensure that it is nothing more than just a tori. Mm. A tori is something you don't need to remove. If it is a growth due to a tumor, and that's a different mm. story altogether, because a tumor in the mouth can also present itself as a smooth swelling on the jaw. So anything you have in the mouth which is not normal, which is there for more than two weeks, you should go to your dentist friend, your surgeon friend, to have a look at it and have it examined. So if you have an ulcer, for instance, if you have an ulcer in your mouth, you know, we all have ulcers in the mouth for different, mm. for different reasons. The key kid, sometimes just accidental, sometimes it's uh, menstrual ulcers, sometimes it's hormonal ulcers. If your ulcer is in the mouth and the ulcer stays with you for more than three weeks, sometimes people say more than two weeks, you mm. must quickly go to the surgeon, to the doctor, to the dentist and have it examined. Because an ulcer in the mouth, which is more than three weeks, can be the beginnings of a cancer, oral cancer. Oof. Can be, not necessarily, but can be. So the sooner you go and have it examined and have it biopsy and looked at pro uh, properly, the better it will be for you. Mm. Um, I think hopefully, <laughs> kind of when it goes to cancer, things are kind of like getting more scary. Yeah, it's getting scary about the day, yeah. Yeah. Let's not talk about pretty things. Let's just talk about pretty nice things, pretty pretty teeth yeah. and stuff. True. Okay, uh, I just have another question. Um, for example, like a smelling mouth that you can, sometimes uh. we talk with people that smell something weird. Can share mm -hmm. identify what kind of smell is that? Normally, what is it caused uh, by that situation? Smell, uh, we call it fetal oris, yeah? When the mouth smells, yeah? Many reasons for, for it. The most important reason is that toothbrushing or none brushing or forget to brush <laughs> or poor brushing technique. So basically, it is just food trap left behind in and around the teeth, in the jawbone, inside the gums, which beyond 24 hours, basically it starts to rot. Teeth in the mouth, also, uh, food in the mouth also does rot, you know. So the rotting can give a very unpleasant smell. So particularly you add to that you have a diabetic person who is uh, badly uh, managed because people with diabetes tends to have a smell also a ketone smell it's a little bit of a smell a poorly managed diabetic person tends to have a little smell coming out from their mouth people who smoke have a bad smell from their mouth people who like eat a lot of garlic have bad smell in their mouth People who have a lot of sinus problems, sinus issues, where their face are all congested, sinus, sinus, or you don't do some somewhere sinus congestion, also tends to have a bit of bad smell in their mouth. People who have constant sore throat problems also have bad smell in their mouth. People who have indigestion, always stomach upset all the time, and you know uh, what we call English word is indigestion, but banyak angin we call it, right? And then that also can give rise to bad smell in the mouth. People who have lung disease, Lung diseases, which are can be pneumonia, can be a, a, a consequence of a obstructive lung disease due to smoking, long term, can also give. So, in essence, anything that affects the track from the stomach all the way up to your mouth, anything that's involving any part of your body that uses the mouth as the endpoint or the entry point, can give rise to bad smell. Okay, all right. <laughs> lung, I never expect lung disease would oh, yes, cause yes, this yes, one. Yes, many, many things oh. cause that. Sometimes the, the nose, uh, people are prone to rhinitis, allergic mm. rhinitis, uh, restung, restung, they call it. Uh, yes, people uh -uh. who have frequent ear infection also can. Yeah, because because the, the, in, in truth, the whole area of the face is intercommunicated. They are interlinked. Mm -hmm. Of course, not obvious uh, obvious passages, but there are ways where you know bacteria can track itself and enter into different mm, cavities. It will cause that. Nah? Okay, I understand. All right. Um, anyone have any questions? Uh, even you can raise your hand if you want to talk directly to the doctor. Uh, can unmute you. I think, do we have anything? Um, Emilia, do you have any other questions from the chat box? No one has any questions regarding children's teeth, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe most of us single, maybe. <laughs> okay, I uh, really want to share anything on children. <laughs> I don't think there is any question on the chat. Uh, oh, yes, yes, uh, yes. Please. Oh, yes. yes. Sorry. Um, is the doctor there? 
Yes, I'm still here. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, okay, right. Okay, um, apa ni? My 17 year old daughter. Okay, talk about children lah. My 17 year old daughter. Uh, gigi depan, gigi atas dia tak bertemu dengan gigi bawah. Gigi depan dia ke depan sikit lah. Gigi bawah dia ke belakang. So, we have decided to do a, a apa namanya? Braces kan? But, mm-hmm. uh, but we doing it at the government clinic lah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, dia kata kena, kena, apa eh, kena bersihkan dulu eh, what do you call it? Uh, kena bersihkan dulu, lepas tu wait three months, and then bersihkan lagi, and then wait three months, baru buat. Is that the procedure? I've, I've never had braces before, so I do not know what is the procedure of just the very simple normal braces. Hmm. I think uh, not really. Just my experience, I tak ada. Tapi my daughter, is it that uh, the right time? The child yeah. also has, oftentimes the child also has a little bit of difficulty in closing the mouth. Ah, yes. Is this correct? Ah, yeah. And then the question yes. is that uh, whether the procedure of waiting three months and then clean and then another three months to clean and then about next procedure, is it that is the actual process of it? Yes, I'm, I'm coming to that point. Uh, when you have a teeth which is projecting out and your mouth is having difficulty in closing together, this means you probably have a, a bit of a dry mouth, number one. Number two is that it's easy to get foot trapped because when you're brushing your teeth, you're, doing, you're not doing such a great job. You probably have your gums around your teeth, which are not very healthy. But cleaning it three times before having the orthodontic procedure done, uh, I'm not so sure why, but having the teeth... Uh, in a healthy state and having the gums in a healthy state, that's very important before you begin uh, orthodontic treatment. That would be a good thing to do because when you have the braces in and all your teeth all tied up and all that, it's very much more difficult to uh, to do a good clean. So better to have it all tied up. That is, I cannot disagree. But three times, I'm not so sure. Okay, there must be a reason for it. <laughs> okay, my second mm. question. Ah, yes. Uh, my, my son also needs some dental treatment, he's, but he's autistic, he's 15 this year. Doctor, if I go to you, can you treat an autistic patient? How young is your child? Yes. Yes. Doctor. Ah, yes. How old? He's, Sorry? Uh, he's going to be 16 soon. 16. How old is the child? 16. Special needs children, yeah. Special ah, yes. needs children uh-huh. range from autism to Downs to rare diseases to uh, patients who are mentally uh, difficult to manage. Yes, this kind of children are difficult to manage. This kind of children have to be managed with care and uh, time must be given to get their to get their acceptance and to get their uh, willingness to participate. And autistic children. Not all of them are difficult. Some I have had children who are nice. Yes, they are autistic, but they will still respond to you and open your mouth and do whatever they want to do. But then there are some who cannot keep still and there are some who will not respond to anything that you want to do to them. In this kind of situation, the best thing that you can do for your child, particularly if there are many dental problems, many dental issues, is to do treatment under sedation. This can be done under sedation or it can be done under general anesthesia. It is not infrequent that we advise parents for the benefit of the child to prevent traumatic dental experiences for the child, we recommend to do the treatment under general anesthesia so that whatever needs to be done can be done all in one sitting, one occasion. The child doesn't remember it much and the child will be in minimal pain. Rather than to force the child in a dental chair, you hold on to the child, you hold the patient's head, you insist on having the tooth removed because the tooth is badly decayed. Yeah? It's oh, sorry. <laughs> it's traumatized to the children. I guess normal children also face the same situation. Okay, that took frozen again. We will see what's best for the child. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, hopefully that answer Kita Minta the question. Yeah, um, I, I think my, my son's condition, like he actually would instruct the doctor to give him all the tools so that he can extract it himself. But it's just that oh. eventually I know he may need um, 
uh, apa namanya braces juga because mm. dia is like tumbuh everywhere tak tahu so yeah maybe i one day i will oh. do uh, my yes. yeah an autistic child an autistic child depending on the degree of autism uh, to put braces in their mouth um, can be challenging because um, again you know if they're compliant with oral care it's fine if they're not compliant with oral care uh, you're not doing them justice actually only because you want them to have a nice smile but they are not taking care of the braces and then you get decay due to food trap and when you remove the braces you have many cavities in the mouth and then you go to clean up the cavities in the mouth and therefore you're adding layers and layers of problems for, for you yourself. So you have to really weigh it properly. Is it very critical for this child be, be on braces? If not, then maybe accept the child as the child is. Okay. But um, I can't yeah. say for sure until I've seen your child. Sorry. This is just a general <laughs> statement, yeah? Maybe, this is just a general statement. Maybe, yeah. maybe inshallah one day uh, we'll drop by and uh, maybe Dr. Yes. yes. We have the number, yeah? <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm, okay. Um, there's another question from Fazil Nur Abdullah. Salam, Doctor. Uh, just now, Doctor had informed that one of the cause for tourists is kunyah makanan berulang kali. But uh, bukankah mengunyah makanan berulang kali itu satu amalan pemakanan yang baik? Or um, macam mana keadaan yang sebenar? Mm. Of course. Mengunyah makanan dengan baik sehingga mm. makanan sudah hazam as you call it the food is well well uh, uh, so domesticated it's good because you do not want to just gulp down and swallow swallow makanan too you know masih berbola-bola gitu pelan-pelan-pelan it's not good because then your stomach has to work over time in order to digest all of that of course you have to chew it properly but there are a lot of people including my sister for example who likes to chew her food I'm finished with my food, she's still chewing. I said, why are you still chewing? I don't know, I like to chew my food. <laughs> there are people who really enjoy the, the, <laughs> the sensation of chewing. And the response and the formation of tori ni, kejadian tori ni bukan semua orang. There may be people who are chewing a oh, yeah, hundred times before they swallow and they still don't get the tori. But then there's some people who just show, swallow, uh, chew their food 30 times, 40 times, they get the tori. Whether it happens to you, it happens to me, it's not something that we can determine. Yeah. But yes, of course, chewing your food well is important. That's why you must have teeth in your mouth. That's why if you don't have teeth in your mouth, replace it with implants. Perhaps. <laughs> Will that answer the question? I think the most important is to visit your dental uh, dentist um, frequently. <laughs> six months, okay. Yeah, yeah, six, six months. months. Okay, it's already due now. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions before we end our program? I, I think it's a lot of questions that I have you already answered in the slides. So it's like, okay, can't answer this question anymore. So it's really um, very informative. I think a um, lot of us I need to relook in our, um, our oral condition um, in order to get a very healthy um, lifestyle most important <laughs> when we meet people <laughs> we feel more confidence that's how when i have to be so um when I, uh, um any uh, um emilia anything else that you, uh, from your side any other questions no question yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the host can share the sign of code and then um i think on the slides uh, our, our presentation itself we can be shared in the web, uh, facebook right uh, so I think anyone that would like to um, listen again uh, probably can visit uh, the Facebook of FEMSO. So hopefully um, can share the, the video itself with other people. So it's not easy to get that. To, to, to it's my pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. Yes. My pleasure. I, I, am, I apologize yeah, for the internet glitches. I thought I'm going to put today, you know, it's one of those days where things must go wrong from home before I came here. So I did not have yang tak kenanya. Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy that I've had this opportunity uh, to talk to all of you. I hope mm. I've done uh, justice to the topic. And mm. I hope that if there's any question at any point in time, feel free to call me. You've already seen my number and my contact. Otherwise, I'm sure the uh, organizing committee people will be able to provide it for you. Uh, we are located mm. at Monkiara, part of the hospital called Global Doctors Hospital. Uh, feel mm. free to call if you have a, a problem. Oh, Thank okay. you. 
I wish Thank you very well. much. Stay safe. So, Thank you yeah, very much. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. So I hope whatever that we gain today, we at least create a little change in our life and contribute to a better well-being. And before we end, I would like to ask Doctor, can you share with us in five words your message on the way to a healthy lifestyle as an architect? <laughs> I the lifestyle. I gave you a message just now. You know what did I say? <laughs> oh yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, hopefully that will, that, that, will, that, will, that give you a good impact. Yes. <laughs> yes. I said the uh, a healthy. Uh, what did I say? Come on, let me get get my my message. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go back healthy... to my to my presentation. Presentation mana? Uh, yeah. The last slide. <laughs> Ah, yes, this one. <laughs> Thank you. Take mm. care of your body. Take money. <laughs> That's my message. Give yes. yourself. Actually, it's how you value yourself. You value your self-worth, your health, mm. and that you're an important member of your country. You will do your best to be stay healthy and be as well as you can be in whatever you do. Yes, true. So um as an architect. I think um, it's important to take care of our health. Eh? All right, thank you very much. I would like to end our session with a reminder from our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa sallam. Ibn Abbas Radiallahu uh, narrated that uh, Prophet Muhammad says, take five before five, your youth before your age, your health before your illness, your emptiness before your work, and your wealth before your poverty, and your life before your death. Narrated by Al-Hakim. So that's all from me. So hopefully the session will be very beneficial, uh, beneficial to all the uh, member, uh, the participants today. So I'll share back this uh, to Puan, uh, Chit, uh, Emilia. Yes, come to you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much to our moderator, graduate architect Wan Siti Hajar, and our speaker, Dr. Dr. Sharifah Fawzia al habshi for the wonderful sharing session. It's very grateful information and myself get a new knowledge of for our team. Last but not least, as you, you are, as all attendees can see on your screen right now, this is the sign up code 2402 PEMSO. LAM and PEM members can start fill in the Google form by key in the sign in and sign up code. The Google form, you can get it by scanning the QR code on your screen right now or on the chat box that have been shared by PEMSO Secretariat. To all, of, to all attendees, don't forget to follow our Facebook and Instagram. PEM Southern Chapter to get a new updates on our upcoming webinar. Also, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel, ARTV by PEMSO. A big thanks to CSR Committee of PEMKL for this great collaboration. Thank you for spending your weekend by joining us today. Hope to see you guys soon on our upcoming webinar in March. Okay. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Bye. Bye 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 bye.